Tracy, the floor is yours. Thank you. And some of what I'm saying, I may say, may pig piggyback on what you were talking about, the ingredients and some of the pens and things like that, that I've researched from a different level because of the kids. Um, I want to introduce you to Walker McKnight. Some of you may have heard about Walker's case. I've actually been in contact with the GoFundMe coordinator for Walker. This is Walker's senior picture um, in Orlando, Florida. He mm -hmm. was a cheerleader, an avid jogger, worked out around four hours a day. Um, so this is his senior picture. And this is Walker two months later. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Walker began vaping when he got to college because of anxiety and stress in college. And when he went in to the hospital, he went to the doctor, presented his flu. Parents didn't know he was vaping. Roommate didn't fess up that he was vaping. Went to the hospital, ended up on a blood oxygen machine in an induced coma, a ventilator for several months. Um, when he finally came to his exact words were, I begged my parents to let me die. Um, my correspondence this week with his GoFundMe coordinator, he will never be remotely the same kid again. He's 20 years old now. He is having to take uh, dialysis three times a week. He's on the waiting list for a double kidney transplant. And they are trying to get him strong enough at this point to remove part, if not all, of his left lung because it is so destroyed from vaping. Mm. They found out he was vaping because his father went in and trashed his dorm room and found the jewel pens in his desk. That's how the doctor started putting two and two together with this young man. Um, the lady that I'm communicating with, the GoFundMe coordinator, she said that she is absolutely thrilled that she knows that people all the way down in Texas are doing talks and wanted me to convey that if Walker's story can reach one parent, or one child to not end up this way, that she is thrilled that we're trying to do this. Do you want to put that GoFundMe page up? I mean, do you? Do I can. You I don't or? have it. I can pull it up for you. We can yeah, definitely if you just do tell it. Us what it is. I'll if look it up. Walker and McKnight can... is his name, and um, it's his GoFundMe page. Okay. I'll, it's I'll, Mary Lynn I'll... Thompson is the coordinator. Okay. We'll get that for at the end. Go ahead. So. Sorry. Vaping by the numbers. I know that this is a lot of numbers on this slide, but I thought it was so important. Um, as Michelle knows, I update this PowerPoint frequently because I want students and families to be aware of how m drastically it's increased just in a few short months. If you look back in September when CDC started tracking more consistently, we were at 450 vaping illnesses and six deaths. If you jump forward to January 14th, this was the most recent study that I could find, we're at 2,668 vaping illnesses and 60 deaths across our nation. The illnesses have been reported to range between 13 and 75 years of age. So there's a huge range. Um, on January 9th, just uh, two weeks ago, we had the youngest uh, death from vaping in the state of Texas. And actually nationally, we lost a 15-year-old female um, who passed away from vaping. Um, I'm going to piggyback on that with this next slide because the youngest death was 15 from vaping illness. However, the youngest victims are much younger and this is pretty staggering to me. This is recent as of January 3rd. This is the National P uh, Poison Control Centers. There's 55 of them across the nation. As of 2018, there were 1,892 children under five wow. exposed to vaping liquids and in most cases by swallowing them. Consequences include the vomiting, the respiratory breathing, seizures, irregular heartbeat. Um, we did have one child in 2014 die from cardiac arrest from inhaling his mother's very sweet smelling candy flavored vape refill. I did see that in Melbourne, Australia, there was a 19 month old that recently died from the same thing. The numbers um, for 2019 are not in yet, but the recent numbers that they said as of November 30th, they have 4,780 4, calls to the hotline just on vaping concerns alone, and that's of all ages. So people, we have commercials for Tide Pods. Put your laundry detergent up. Don't let your kids get into it. And again, it goes back to what you were saying about the marketing. There's no ad warning parents, don't let your kids and your babies get a hold of this because it can kill them. So that, I don't know if that's new information for anybody, but it's shocking to me. 
Um, as you said, it, it was not until October that CDC finally gave this illness a name, which is Evoli. Um, and as you also said, this comes on extremely quickly. Parents that I have talked to that have taken their kids to the emergency rooms report it as a severe flu, extreme fatigue, high fevers, vomiting. They take them to the emergency room. And of course, these kids are not saying, I'm vaping, mom. You know, I'm, I'm just sick. I'm not vaping. Mm -hmm. So usually the doctors are playing catch up because they don't know exactly what's going on with these kids when they get to a hospital. Um, illnesses declined very quickly, as you saw with Walker. Organ failure, blood oxygen machines, comas, things like that, and especially in your younger kids because their lungs and their bodies are smaller and they can't process all these toxins as well as some of the older people. Um, you mentioned the vitamin E acetate. That's the one chemical that the CDC that I found has been able to isolate in at least 29 of the ill patients. So that at least they're making progress determining some of the things that are in the fluids that are making them sick. But there are many, many more that our kids just have no idea about. Um, this is Dr. Eric Berniker. He's been very, very vocal in the city of Houston about the vaping crisis. He's with Houston Methodist. This was a study that I found interesting specifically on the crisis in middle schools in our area. This is from October. He says that these kids are reporting you get a really quick, really fast high that's really pleasurable, and that's because everything's going into your lungs in a vapor form. Problem is, it's extremely addictive. Um, doctors are reporting it's about 10 times more addictive than cigarettes to quit smoking. Police officers that I've interviewed are stating that when they arrest these kids, and they are starting to arrest them, if there is THC oil in the vape pen, because it's so concentrated, it's about four times stronger when these officers test it than marijuana itself, which is a huge problem. Um, again, going back to middle school kids' bodies being smaller, their lungs are not developed, so if you're inhaling all this stuff, it's really affecting their lungs. I've talked to middle school teachers, Dr. Berniker referenced this, kids are coming in from lunch, the bathrooms, whatever, bouncing off the walls. And we're talking 12, 13, 14 year old kids. So, and that's, you were asking about the age range. Um, this one's staggering. This is a new FD, FDA report. 20, between 2017 and 18, vaping has increased 78% among high schoolers and 48% among middle, middle schoolers. So that comes out to be about one out of every five high school students is vaping, 13% of middle schools. And guys, I can promise you that is highly underreported because our kids aren't being honest. They don't want us to know. So it puts educators in a bind. It puts doctors in a bind. Um, it's a huge problem. This National Institute on Drug Abuse, uh, this was really interesting to me. 30.7 kids who vape start smoking cigarettes within six months of vaping. And the reason for that is because once you vape, you have to start increasing your doses to get the same buzz you were getting from vaping. So you're having to do more and more and more. So they're turning to cigarettes to get that more consistent nicotine buzz. Um, you were asking, uh, Joe, about what's in it. This is a, some of the chemicals that I've consistently been able to research that are in vape pens. Um, lead, aluminum, glycol ethers. Glycol ethers are found in cleaning solvents and paint or water-based paints. Our kids are inhaling this. Diacetyl is a huge one. Back when microwave popcorn first came out, it was an FDA-approved flavoring. It was the butter flavor. Um, what happened, though, was in the popcorn plants, the people that were manufacturing the popcorn were inhaling this butter-scented, butter-flavoring, and people started getting very sick. There were deaths reported. And when they did the research and they started looking at lungs, diacetyl, actually there's a term now, it's called popcorn lung. Because the diacetyl will get into the, and correct me if I'm wrong, it gets into the very small capillaries of the lungs and literally inflates them like popcorn if you look at an x-ray. Our babies are smoking this. Vegetable glycerin and propylene glycol. You'll hear kids, if you hear slang term, I've got VG or I've got PG vape. This is the difference. The vegetable glycerin is a very thick, syrupy, vegetable-based fluid. This is what, when you inhale it, it's essentially an oil. 
that's what creates the huge cloud of smoke that's so trendy with our kids. They think that's cool. You see them and there's ads, just like we were talking about, ads with all the smoke and everything that that particular chemical is a VG-based vape pen. Propylene glycol, if you know somebody with asthma, um, yes, it's used in the medical community um, in very, very small doses in an asthma inhaler. So you can imagine if somebody needs that and they inhale it, how it inflates their lungs to help them breathe during an asthma attack. In vape pens, it's been found in very high quantities. So your lungs are not only inflating, they're really inflating. And this stuff is odorless, colorless, and very difficult to detect. So if our kids are smoking a PG vape bait pen, you're not necessarily gonna get the huge cloud of smoke and you're not gonna have that real sweet smell. So the companies are getting smarter, marketing stuff to the kids so we can't catch them. Um, one of the big reasons that Juul and other companies are getting sued is because they've advertised that it's so much safer than smoking, especially mm -hmm. the secondhand smoke. Okay. However, repeated studies by the FDA, CDC, and the Drug Council have shown that it's extremely deadly, and, and formaldehyde has been found in secondhand vape smoke repeatedly. I don't know about anybody else, but I didn't get up this morning and want to go smoke some embalming fluid or breathe it, but that's been found in the secondhand smoke in our vaping. This is the Institute on Drug Abuse report that I was talking about. You can see that 30.7% of kids who vape start smoking within six months, and this is a very recent study, as opposed to 8.1% of kids who don't vape start smoking. The quote at the bottom, per Jules' website, one vape pod is equivalent to one pack of cigarettes. Our kids do not know this. And that is actually out of a Texas educator's um, journal that was just published in December of 2019. What really scares me, as I was talking about, our kids don't know what they're smoking. 66% of kids who are vaping think it's cool, it's trendy, let's go to the party, and they think it's just water and simple organic flavors. I've had that, oh, Miss Tracy, it's organic. No, sweetie, it's not organic. So they just don't know what they're doing, and it's making them sick. But and I don't mean to interrupt your oh, you're flow, fine. but do they really care? I mean, you know, kids are kids, and I'm invincible, and it's not going to hurt me. Some do, believe it or not. Some don't. And if you tell them, is it really going to change their behavior? It depends on how you approach them. If you lecture them, they're not going to give a rat's behind what you're telling them. If you sit down and try to talk to them and just say, hey, this is information that I have that it scares me for you. There's different ways to approach it. Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh, you didn't. We'll, we'll no, you're fine. That. That's no. a very good point. No, just no, you didn't. You're fine. This was another recent study um, from November 5th. Channel, Channel 13 did a really in-depth story on the problem in vaping in our high in our schools, and they interviewed over a thousand different school districts and asked them for data. In 2018-19, and keep in mind, this is a standard school year, so they're not their summers, they're not their Christmas or spring break, and all the other holidays. 15,000 vaping incidents at school were reported across the state in one year. 80, that averages 82 vaping incidents a day across the state. Just two months into this year, 3,800 vaping incidents have been reported, including many reports from elementary schools. The most recent one that I could find uh, was a fifth grader, 10-year-old boy, was busted vaping on the playground at an elementary school in Jasper, Texas. So they're getting younger and younger and younger. Again, this is highly underreported and there's many reasons why. Texas Education Agency does not mandate that school districts track at this time. HISD is the largest school district in Texas and they do not track. They were actually one of the ones that refused to provide data in this study. Um, recent study didn't have time to add it. It actually came out, Channel 2 did one um, on the 23rd of this month, if you want to Google it or look it up. They have a list of all the school districts in the state that are tracking and those that aren't. Very impressed with some. Some still have a whole lot of work to do. So that's one of the reasons it's so underreported. That and our kids don't tell us. Mm -hmm. So that's, I find it very uh, fascinating that um, at fifth grades, what do you think is the access? Is that the reason why there's so many of these kids I are will, there? I will get to that in just one second. Um, access <coughs> is big. Um, to go back to oh, the access, for one of the things on this, vaping in schools, how are they getting it? How are they getting it? 
I talk to kids, you can Google it and you're not you're gonna get an answer, oh it's the advertising. I talk to multiple students, high school kids, junior high kids, friends of my kids of my friends. Um, the number one answer is I got it from my parents. Mm -hmm. I have a student that was real blunt with me and said, Miss, you know, I wasn't going to be cool if I didn't vape at the party. My dad vapes so much, he's got like 27 vape pens in the car, in the bathroom, in the kitchen, in the house. So I took one of his. He didn't even miss it. So a couple weeks later, his vape pen goes missing. He thought it got taken at the party or whatever. So he went back and took another one from his dad. Wasn't until a couple weeks later that he's getting screamed at for being an irresponsible big brother because his 12-year-old brother got busted at school for vaping. It's a junior high kid. And then he told the school, I got it from my brother, who then in turn had to say, well, I got it from you, Dad, because there's no conversation going on. Um, that was, that's the predominant one that I'm hearing from our students is they're getting it from either older siblings or parents. They're also getting it from, um, they're just paying people, paying older people that are legal to buy it to go in and get it for them. They'll pay them on top of what the vape is. They also, I can promise you, they know every vape store that doesn't card and doesn't care. Mm -hmm. And they'll, they'll get it if they want it. And if they can't get it, going back to your point, the DIY vaping liquids, if you can't get it, they're going to find a way to make it. And if we, the FDA can't even regulate what they're buying, what's being made is even more scary to think about. Um, there's a huge drain in our public schools on finances um, for many reasons. And you also have to think about the disruptions on our students and our staff in classrooms trying to learn. Um, there's increased police involvement, which is another expense. We have to think about that many schools, and I'm not, this, you, they are having to resort to taking bathroom doors off the bathroom stalls because kids are going into the bathrooms and vaping so frequently in the bathrooms. So then you're looking at the maintenance crew, ex more expense on our schools. Some of the school principals that I've spoken with have said that they are having to pay extra hall monitors and pay people to stand in the doorways of the bathroom to prevent kids from vaping. If you can't catch them, what's happening is they're getting back to class and they're bouncing off the walls. Again, disruption. Um, student consequences are kind of all over the map. They range from a slap on the wrist to in-school suspension or dehaul to full-on suspensions to expulsions to placements at juvenile justice education alternative schools, all the way up to felony possession of a narcotic if you're busted with THC and a vape. Um, in the state of Texas, a kid can be charged with a felony at 15. So this is life-altering. I mean, if you get popped and you're charged with felony possession of a narcotic on a school campus, that's on your record. That's not going to go away. Mm -hmm. Why is there such a wide range? I've talked to several um, principals at different sized schools, different high schools, different junior highs. Because Texas Education Agency doesn't have a specific code of conduct for vaping, and here's why. It makes a lot of sense. They have a specific code of conduct for nicotine and tobacco and cigarettes. So if a principal or a teacher catches a kid with cigarettes, you know what the law is, you know exactly what to do in that case. We also obviously have a very specific code of conduct for THC, for marijuana. There's legal ramifications. How much do you have? Is it a misdemeanor or a felony? Are you expelled? Very specific. Well, here you have vaping. It's a whole anomaly. It's kind of a combination of all of it. So there's no code yet how to adequately track this. Um, a real good friend of mine works at an extremely large high school, and I think there's eight assistant principals. They're trying to track, but one may code it as a substantial disruption in a classroom because a kid breaks out a vape pen in class, which happens all the time. Or one might, I'm not making that really? up. They, no, oh. really, they do. And so you code that as a substantial disruption. Another principal may be coding that as possession of paraphernalia. Another may be coding it as possession of a possible nicotine paraphernalia inhaler. So you can see they're trying, but until they come up with very consistent ways to track this, we're not going to have accurate numbers. I know a lot of school boards are going back to the drawing board this summer, trying to keep up with all the new laws and changes, so I'm hoping we'll see some improvement in that next year. Any questions? 
No, as a school, can't you say that uh, vaping is banned? You can. Like uh, the example, I find it very surprising. A kid would just start vaping oh, inside a class. My daughter said it happened in one of her science classes all the time because the kid would just kind of sit at the back and, and just, you know, and the teacher was too busy trying to do what she needed to do. Teach. Teach. Exactly. Yes. Right. Exactly. That's scary. It, it is pretty frightening. Um, these are really, really good. Um, some of them are obvious, but going outside a lot, going to the bathroom a lot, um, unexplained sweet odor. That vegetable glycerin based vape with the huge clouds, you cannot mistake the odor. It's super sweet, super thick, syrupy almost. You're going to smell it on them. Um, mood swings. These are huge. Again, I mentioned bouncing off the walls. It can cause extreme rage, extreme anxiety, especially if you can't get to a vape pen. And one of the things that's very interesting is if your kiddo is drinking caffeine along with vaping, those mood swings and explosive anger are way up here. The comb the caffeine and vaping don't mix. Um, unfamiliar gadgets and electronics, and I'll show you some of those in a minute, increase thirst from their mouth being so dry from the, the smoke. Um, nosebleeds, mouth sores, and persistent cough. Those can be indicative of a kiddo who has vaped for a while, but it can also be very sudden onset because, like you said, this, these illnesses are coming on so quickly. How to hide your juice in plain sight. Could not make this up. This hoodie, if you can see this hoodie, you can buy that on Amazon. Wow. If you've got your Amazon Prime account saved, not bashing Amazon, I love them, but if you've got it saved, all your kiddo has to do is go on there and, and order this hoodie, and it hides the vaping in it. The strings on the hoodie are actually the straw. The cartridge is in the neck of the hood. Um, you can Google it. There's hundreds of places to get these. Some of them do not ask for an age. The one at the top, what look like cute little hippie kind of highlighters that are really like marketed towards junior high kids, aren't they so cute? Those are what are called puff pens. Those are actually individual dis disposable vape pens. Well, if you see a kid with one, it looks like a highlighter. Uh, the next one, the, it is a f fake credit card. Um, the vape pod is actually inserted inside the credit card. It's very thin, you'll miss it. It sits in somebody's wallet. It looks just like a credit card. Tic-tac-toe, this one's great. If you see a kid with these, the tic-tacs actually rattle. They actually shake. So if you catch a kid with this and you're not really looking for the vape pen in it, you're going to think they just have tic-tacs. Um, the, the one at the bottom, the little um, computers, those are actually disposable cartridges for vape that go in a pen. If you see these in a school, you're going to think they brought their homework to class or they've got a project. Uh, the lipstick, it comes in a variety of colors depending on what your young lady wants to wear. Um, that is actually a vape cartridge. There is one that looks just like an eye watch, that the cartridge where the eye watch, the face of the eye watch is on top, it um, pushes forward and you can just sit there and vape underneath your sleeves. School districts, have, some of them have started doing a no sleeve policy where they make the kids keep the sleeves rolled up. Some are going so far as to resort to no hoodies in, cl in, in class. Oh, goodness. So, any questions on that? Shocked? Uh, I'm just, I, mean, I know human ingenuity is, is great. We are the most successful species, but yeah. wow, that's like, yeah. that's impressive. It's it is in a and it's in scary a, in, in a very, very, very in bad very way. way. Yes, it in is. an evil way almost. Yes, it, it is. And this is what our teachers and our administrators are up against every day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can assure you. You know, the, we, we remember this <coughs> ago when the cigarette uh, companies, the tobacco big R. J. Reynolds, and all those people were being hauled, you know, in front of Congress and all of the lawsuits and so forth and claiming that the cigarettes aren't causing all these problems, you know, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with these, you know, it's not what's causing cancer, you know, even though, you know, John Ochsner, uh, or Alton Ochsner identified that along with the Bakey, uh, right. all the way back in the 50s, they knew that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, 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 when asked, do, do you smoke? Do your yeah. children smoke? Will you, you let your children smoke? It stumped them right. all the time. And these people, I think those people, and I think these people that make this, they're evil. 
Sorry. But I mean, the intent behind the whole thing, if it was something very acceptable and people did not know it, you don't need to go through all this innovative ways exactly. of hiding right. it. They that itself shows. Wrong. I mean, it's, it's mm -hmm. crazy. People who are manufacturing it know very well mm -hmm. this is not something which is acceptable to do. And just finding innovative ways of hiding that. It's, it's well, speaking of hiding, there are actually, um, and they look just like Coke cans, Diet Coke cans, whatever flavor soda your kiddo drinks. Um, and it, it, it actually unscrews. And so if you see a Coke can or something like that in your kid's bedroom, there, it can be a, what they, a mini safe to put their vape pens and pods in so you just don't see it. Um, but there, there's hundreds of these. I just had to narrow down, but there's hundreds of these. And this just shows you our kids are getting creative. They don't either don't care or don't want to know. Well, the adults are getting creative yes. yeah. in manufacturing this. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. The kids are just taking advantage exactly. of other people's ingenuity, which okay. is making those people, who I, again, will say, you know, un unashamedly are evil, uh, getting rich. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I'll let you go on. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, you're fine. You're fine. But there, there are multiple sites you can buy this from. And like I said, not all of them ask your age when you click in. Or you can just lie and say, yeah, I'm 21. And wow. they'll let you right in. What's being done in Texas? Um, recently in Sugarland, I admire the heck out of this kid. There was a 17-year-old um, senior at Dulles High School named Mattel Mullis, and he was reporting that about 90% of his friends were vaping. And he was fed up with it because his friends were starting to get sick. He had done the research. He knew the secondhand smoke was dangerous. So this kiddo went to the Sugarland City Council and petitioned. I want this banned. Well, they listened. So Sugarland City Council passed an ordinance that anyone caught vaping in the entire city of Sugarland is subjected to a $500 fine. I think it's brilliant. I wish more people would find their voices. 17 counties across Texas have followed suit. Multiple college campuses have as well, prohibiting these cigarettes anywhere cigarettes are, are, are not allowed. Uh, we were actually one step ahead of the federal government here. In September, uh, Greg Abbott, our governor, signed Senate Bill 21 into effect, raising the age of vaping from 18 to 21, being able to buy. Um, and like I said, school boards across the state are working really hard. They're playing catch up, they're scrambling because this is such a new epidemic, but they are working really hard to try to come up with accurate codes of conduct. And again, I'm hoping we'll see some improvement with that over the summer. And here's a question I have. We have such a pervasive mm -hmm. thing. It's, it's very well accepted now. You can't smoke inside. Right hospitals or in, in a flight you have all these uh, these things so why don't we have it legally like even in texas any place where you cannot smoke you should not be vaping there too i agree 100 percent. but the, again it's a new it's a new phenomenon and so we're going to have to start using our voices and going to our councilmen and our our boards school boards hospital boards to make sure that it is banned i agree 100 percent with you and I've asked that question a lot. I mean, it's back in the day, I mean, when I came here to now, you can't even go and smoke inside a bar anymore. Right. I mean, it's, it's the most frequent place people used to right. go in and hang out. Mm -hmm. Everybody has been banned to the backyard or in the, or mm -hmm. in the side alley, and you have your own sm little smoker's, um, what you call um, I'm starting to see signs. So. You'll start, you're probably going to start mm -hmm. noticing them on restaurants and movie theaters mm -hmm. and things, and you'll see the no vaping along with the no cigarette. Right. But that's been within just the last few months, yeah, which that's very new. Very. Because I can remember in this past previous year mm -hmm. going to a movie theater, even a children's movie, mm -hmm. my kids and people are vaping everywhere. And mm -hmm. even if you ask them, you know, could you step outside to do that? They I'm won't. not bothering you. Right. Mm -hmm. This you, is safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's safe. There's you nothing wrong with this smoke. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it is new, but again, we're playing catch up because this has been in our country since about 2007 and, and we didn't regulate it then. Mm -hmm. So we're way behind. Mm -hmm. um, what's being done federally? Um, as you mentioned, January 2nd, President Trump um, signed into order that all uh, flavored, either that smell like or are flavored like mint, candy, desserts, that type of thing, those are banned. Um, along with raising the federal age of purchasing vape to 21. Mm -hmm. um, nicotine and menthol liquid dispen and the large canister type that are not like the puff pens that the kids are using, those are still legal. And 
Part of that, yeah, is probably a money thing with the nicotine companies, but the other part of that is some of those cartridges were marketed effectively for step down from cigarettes mm -hmm. for adults. So there's that gray area that they were marketed correctly from the beginning. Um, this is really new. Um, all companies who want to produce any type of e-liquid, they have to submit an application just like a tobacco company would to the FDA by May 12th, uh, proving that their product is appropriate for the protection of public health. So that'll give us a little bit more ability to regulate what's being sold. Um, 13 states have banned vaping altogether. Um, Minnesota is one of many, many states that has sued Juul, and the way they're suing them is for marketing our kids, targeting our kids through the marketing and the advertising of unsafe nicotine. So that's how they're starting to answer your question to try to target the advertising. Um, but again, our states are going to have to be the ones that are suing. Um, this again, I talked to a lot of kids about this. What, how many of y'all have been there where we need to talk? Oh, no. Okay, well, the kids want you to talk to them. Um, the first thing they want you to do is really listen, listen, listen. And the reason I say that is because, sure, they're going to tell you, oh, it's my buddies who left it in my car, oh, blah, blah, blah. But they want you to at least hear them out. And then as a parent, you need to really pay attention to what they're telling you. Um, and don't be afraid to have a very difficult conversation. I had several junior high kids say, you know, I really wanted to ask my mom, is this really safe or is this something that I can do? But I was afraid if I asked her, she was going to assume I was already I'm doing, doing it. it or I was going to get in trouble. So don't be afraid to have the difficult conversations with your kids. Um, I get this all the time, but if I, if I look at their phone or if I go through their room, I'm spying. You're not spying on your kids if you're paying attention. It's a totally different thing. Um, kids also say, please give me appropriate, consistent consequences. Like, don't ground me for a week and then change your mind. Oh, you can have your iPad back today because it's easier for you at dinner and then take it away again. I don't know if that makes sense. But Absolutely. Um, the other thing parents can do, again, use your voice. Go to your congressman, go to your senator, go to your local city councils, petition that vaping be banned in your county. Um, use your voice. And I think that those are some real important tips that we all need to remember that we're in control of. Any questions, comments, thoughts? I think we have a lot. <laughs> I'm going to let you go first. Um, okay. I guess what I want to know is you talked a lot about the VG versus mm -hmm. PG. Mm -hmm. So do you think that uh, PG is now the way that they're going to be marketing uh, so that people are able to do this in a less in a uh, less conspicuous way. Yes and no. Um, most they're trying to go towards a um, blend, actually, and there's a reason for that. The PG burns the back of the throat, and you'll read all about it. It's called the the throat burn. That's your your desired throat burn or your desired throat buzz. Um, it's if you read a lot about the VG versus PG. The VG is more flavorful. Um, it's less of a, an immediate burn at the back of the throat. The PG is, is I think, probably because it's that inhaler mm -hmm. hits the back of your throat. It's kind of a user's choice. Um, most of the research I've seen is they're trying to come up with a combination of both. Hmm. So, but you can hold your breath. You can hold your breath. And if you do hold your breath long enough, even with the big cloud, and you hold your breath and you keep your head down, it's eventually going to be absorbed. And you're not going to see the huge clouds. That's incredible. So that's all I have for the moment. Okay. Dr. Soma? I'm, I'm just sorry. I'm, I don't know what to say. It's, it's very scary, actually. Yes, sir. To be the, the way uh, the market. I did not know all of this, to be honest. I thought it's only Jewel or whatever it is. But uh, I'm still very um, surprised that we have so many rules and regulations on different things, and this is still happening. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm really, really, really surprised about, mm -hmm. that we are able to openly market it in such innovative ways. And even where we start off, schools and places like that, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's acceptable to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't know, is it a failure on our part as a regulation, parenting? I have no idea, to be honest. Um, and that's a conversation. It's, it's very eye -opening. I have two young kids, they're 10 and 8, and now I probably I need to actually right. seriously uh, look into what they're doing, actually. 
uh, when they go home or when they go to school and what are they getting exposed to that's um, it, it's very surprising a friend of mine that's a principal again in a large school told me that um, they're averaging between five and ten incidents a week so you can imagine the teaching the distraction from teaching the uh, time away from the administrators actually monitoring the whole school dealing with this mm -hmm. um, the nurse being involved on some occasions I know Tomball High School had to ambulance a student to the hospital back November was it November ish I think so the time away from just actually going to school is huge if you wow. think about between five and ten incidents a week so it's kind of uh, all of what you said it all needs to be gotcha. looked into so is there a groundswell going on I, mean, it's, I think schools are where we essentially establish all the habits as an adult and what the norms and everything are do you see anything going forward at least in texas which is relatively more conservative i think a lot more stringent in these aspects yes i do see that they're trying to get more stringent but until we have actual codes of conduct in place from the state lawmakers it's going to vary from district to district um, private schools have a lot more ability to you're expelled it's mm -hmm. it's in my code of conduct they can update theirs a lot more quickly than public school districts and that's not a criticism to them it's just that they have to they're governed by the state ed education agency mm -hmm. gotcha. and it trickles down now okay. some districts like i said are doing an excellent job tracking um, right on down to something as simple as six, this was an Aldean ISD officer, um, sixth grade student in possession of clear e-cigarette device on campus. That's pretty clear. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that more districts follow suit and that we can come up with more consistency. Mm -hmm. Did that answer your question? I think uh, we're going to have to look at the negative reinforcement ways. You know, sometimes you go positive, but kids have to know what's going to happen to you. You can end up on a ventilator. Mm -hmm. And that uh, parent, parents have affected kids have to share more, to like to help other kids see what's going to end up the end result is going to be. Right. I mm -hmm. think that's going to help a lot. And uh, so people who uh, who have encountered the, like the drama, you need to share so you can other kids can see this is where you're going to end up. Mm -hmm. This is how we like lung cancer in that situation we went around it with smoking. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The we should value. we should not yeah we should not be afraid to shock value. Mm -hmm. We try to cover people and. Uh, don't do this, don't do it tomorrow, no. You need to see the effect of doing this. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with showing negative results. We cannot be touchy feely all the time. Mm -hmm. But I think you need to do that. And, you know, I know this may seem a bit harsh, but that needs to be done when they're five and six years old. I agree. Not when they've already started with the risky behavior. Mm -hmm. I mean, being, yeah. being in detention is not, I don't think it's going to do anything. Kids would, don't care. They'll just take us a break. Well, you expel them, but yeah. the parents skate, and they've got, they got the vape pass from the parents because yeah. the parents and, s and siblings and everybody else is vaping at home because everybody thinks it's so good for you. Right. Everything. But when they see a picture of a young athlete who's now on a ventilator and probably will never recover and uh, loss of muscle too and loss of cerebral function, mm -hmm. how that's going to be like, or how he's going to need maybe 24-hour care, future life, and end up in an institution, I think this kind of things is... Uh, well, I think, you know, there's a, a big push, <laughs> even in elementary schools, they have the drug-free week, mm -hmm. you know? I think this needs to be included, mm -hmm. because I have a fifth grader, and mm -hmm. he knows people who are vaping in his school. Wow. Oh, I believe you. Oh, I absolutely believe you. He's 10. Mm -hmm. And I do presentations in schools when you're welcomed in. Um, some school districts, they don't want to talk about it because they don't want their rating to go down, mm -hmm. like from exemplary to standard right. or whatever. So they don't want, others are much more open mm -hmm. on getting in there and letting, letting professionals get in there and educate the staff and the kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other aspect which people said, nicotine is toxic. Mm -hmm. It is a huge sympathetic stimulation it gives you. Like in a regular cigarette, majority of the nicotine actually gets burnt off. But if you consume it orally and a naive person, you actually right. can have severe cardiac toxicity from it. That's what worries me essentially is now we have this liquid filled with nicotine. I mean, so I'm sure right. if kids swallow it or something, that's... But you that's remember the time when e-cigarettes were allowed on flights even? Mm -hmm. In the beginning, there's this okay to have e-cigarettes on flights. Sure, just water so that's vapor. Why, it's water yeah, vapor. Yeah, it's yeah that's why they thought it's so safe. You can have it on the plane, it must be safe. Right. So that's from mm -hmm. yeah. Even if you walk to Methodist Hospital in the main building, I don't know whether it's still there or not, 
you have uh, asterisks in the hospital. Yes. I mean, it's like it tells yeah. you well, I mean, where we come from and everything else. But I mean, I come from a time when you, the nurses would be smoking at the nurses' station, mm -hmm. uh -huh. taking care of the patients in the ICU, and they had an ashtray. Do you ever remember that? Even, even in the <laughs> you know, he took the words out of my mouth. Was that prehistoric, or what is that? <laughs> okay, so, so with all of that said, Dr. Matoyer has arrived, okay. which is great. I know we're going to be. Uh, go I have, I have so many things that I want to say about this, and probably a lot of them are, uh, uh, you know, ideology and you know, uh, philosophical and legal and my thoughts about all of this, we're, we're going to have to, you're going to have to commit to me. And Dr. Uh, Jothula, you're going to also, Dr. Samir, of course, I know you will, uh, because I'm going to cook you a hamburger. And I know I can always get you here by just telling you I'm going to cook you we'll a hamburger. We'll see today. We'll see how it uh, looks like. We'll see how it goes today. But you have to commit to me that you will come back and revisit this in a part two. Absolutely. Uh, because this is just such a big thing, big problem. And uh, I will tell you, uh, Tracy, you did an out an incredible job with yeah. this. Thank you. And Great presentation. I've Thank learned you. so much from your lecture that I just was unaware of. Thank and you. Uh, But it's, it's caused me to have more questions <coughs> than answers. I've got a lot of questions. But what we're going to do is we're going to have a part two, so be looking.